Hi, I'm Megan O'Quinn with ICEV, and I'm actually one of the developers of our Microsoft Office curriculum. And so I'm excited today to present to you this workshop called Making Sense of Microsoft Using ICEV to Teach Microsoft Office. So I'm going to actually close out of the video portion of the presentation here, so that way you can see my slides a little better. Like I said, my name is Megan O'Quinn. I've got my Twitter handle here, and then I also have my email address. So feel free to contact me if you have any questions after the session and would like some more information on Microsoft Office or ICEV in general. Really the best way to take a look at the curriculum is to actually go into ICEV and see how the different lessons are laid out in the units for all the different programs, the projects, and then also look at our hybrid format of using Microsoft PowerPoint as well as video presentations to teach the different Microsoft Office programs. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here is the ICEV platform. And so this is actually the first screen that you would see once you logged in and decided that you're going to choose a course to be added to ICEV. So to locate the Microsoft Office curriculum, there's a couple of different places that you can look. The first is going to be in a business applic computer applications course or business information management, anything that would be dealing with um, computer applications or teaching Microsoft Office is going to have kind of this parentheses with the version that's covered within the course. And then the other place where you can actually go and locate the Microsoft Office curriculum is under the subject area playlist tab. So if you click on that, you're going to see that there's the 2013 version and the 2016 version, that the subject area playlist is only going to have the Microsoft Office lessons. So if we go back here, and we're actually gonna go ahead and add this business computer applications course so that we have it and put it in there. And one thing that's just kind of a tip is I would go ahead and put what class period you taught the course anytime that you're setting up your courses, just to save you some time later when you're going to be enrolling students or just for your organization purposes. So once you've got that course title entered, you just click on add course and then to go in and view the course or once you're done adding courses you can click on finish once you do that it's going to take you to your my courses page the my courses page acts as a dashboard for all the different courses that you've created within an icev account so for this current account i've got my microsoft office 2016 course playlist that i added previously and then I also have the first period business computer applications course that we added. So the difference between those, this playlist was added from a subject area playlist, which only has Microsoft Office lessons. So we can click and kind of scroll through that. And you can see that there's only Microsoft Office lessons there. And then the actual course playlist, if we click on it and go into it, it's going to have all of the different lessons you need to supplement the Microsoft Office curriculum to meet all of those different standards that are typically within the course. So those are just two different ways that you can kind of get to um, that specific curriculum. So just to kind of give you an overall layout of ICEV and how everything is put together, um, let's take a look at one of the lessons. So we're going to start just by looking at Word Unit 5 here. So we'll click on View. It's important to know that if you know how one lesson is laid out in ICEV, you're going to really know how all the lessons are laid out because the general design of everything is the same. So that makes it really nice. So each lesson is going to have a media player area where if it is a PowerPoint, like what this one is right now, um, would come up to be viewed. If it was a video, so let's say it was one of the videos that's within this lesson, the video player would be where you would show it here within this um, media viewing area. Each lesson is going to come with its own lesson plan. So if we click on the view lesson plan icon here, it's going to open up that lesson plan. The first page of the lesson plan is going to give you your media type. This one is a hybrid, which means it uses both Microsoft PowerPoint and video segments. Your duration, which says how long it is, so 30 slides in eight minutes. So you have your description, 
your objectives, and then also your horizontal alignments. Or if you are in a common core state, we've gone through and added common core alignments to these lesson plans so that you can show how you're impacting core curriculum areas, either with horizontal alignments or common core alignments. The next page actually goes into where the meat of the lesson plan is or the teacher lesson plan. All of the Microsoft units are going to be stepped out so that way you can really see what you're supposed to be doing or suggestions for what you should be doing, I should say, um, throughout each of the different lessons. You have your different icons showing you what you would be using from a media type perspective within each step. For instance, in step three, you're viewing the PowerPoint segment, saving. And then in step four, you're viewing the video segment called saving documents. Then it's going to discuss the project or activities as well as the assessments which are available. All the items that are mentioned within the lesson plan are pre-made. And if we go back outside of the lesson plan here, so back to our lesson page, beneath your printable heading, you're going to have any of those particular items. So for instance, there was the project business letter distribution that was mentioned in the lesson. So if we click on that, that's going to open up a PDF. So you can look at it, it's going to have your instructions, then it's going to have a sample image of what the actual completed file should look like. And then the last page is going to go over a rubric which we've created for you, as well as give you a place to enter comments. Additionally, if there's a student file needed for the particular project or activity, which there is, it would be located right beneath that particular project and say student file at the end. Also, it's going to tell you within your project sheet or within the lesson plan if there are any projects that um, require those student files and what those student files are. In addition to the projects and activities that you have, you're also going to have student notes or key concepts, depending on which version of the lesson you're looking at. Those are just going to be fill in the blank options that students can complete while watching the PowerPoints or videos that really just hone in on the different ideas that have been presented and just kind of help keep students engaged. There's also going to be teacher notes, which are just a printout of the different student notes or the presentation already filled in so that you have that that you can use for notes for yourself for teaching. A vocabulary handout, which is going to go over all of the key terms, not just within this one particular unit, but between for the entire Microsoft Office program that you're viewing. So these would be all of the vocabulary words for Microsoft Word. You're also going to have a worksheet, which is accompanying the video segment, so students can fill those in while watching those videos. And then there's going to be an assessment, which goes with each of the different um, segments of the video or with the different units. And so those are just going to be kind of quick um, assessments for each unit. And then when you get to the final review unit, there's a much more rigorous in-depth assessment that goes along with it. These are much more of checks for understanding for the shorter units. One thing that's really nice is if you do have student accounts or student licenses with ICEB, you'll have access to the interactive portion. And what's great about the interactive portion is it's going to grade all of these different items for you. So these are all activities or assignments that you can give your students that would be graded through ICEB. So if you wanted them to complete their student notes, which there was the printable version of, but there's also an interactive version, they could come in and click on the student notes, work through them, and then once they finish those student notes, it's going to automatically grade it for you. And since I skipped a whole bunch, it's going to tell me I didn't do very good. But that would automatically be graded for you from a student perspective. So just a little less paperwork to have to worry about. So the interactive options for those are you're always going to have student notes or key concepts, worksheets, and then also all of the assessments will be available interactively. So those are all things you can do as kind of a time saver. There are some different things that you can do within each lesson to change what your students see. And those are the different visibility settings. And you can see a lot of them on our interactive portion here. There's one column on the printables. And essentially what it is, is the visible to students 
So if you're wanting to make sure that a project or an activity is visible, just make sure that checkbox is checked. We're down here in the interactive portion. You still have that visible to students option. If it's checked, that means the student can see it on their student license. If it's unchecked, that means it's not available for them to see. We are looking at the attempt threshold. You can go in and specify how many attempts that a student gets. If it's left blank, that means that there's an infinite number of times that they can go in and take that particular um, interactive assignment. So going in and setting those is really kind of up to you. We leave them blank by default, so that way um, you can go in and specify the exact number you want. Show details just means show answers whenever a student finishes an interactive activity or project. So if you have that checked, that means when they finish those student notes, it was checked, it would show up and tell them what they got wrong or what they got correct. If it's unchecked, it keeps that a secret. Uh, one great thing about show details is if you hide it, you can hide those up until the point that you're ready for them to study for their final assessment. And then once you're ready for that, you can just turn that back on and then they've got automatic study material for them. There's also the deactivate on date option. If you click on that, that just allows you to go in and put deadlines on different dates that you want assignments completed by. So you can go in and essentially kind of build your schedule out and also hold students accountable for having um, their materials turned in by a certain period of time or completed by a certain period of time. One other piece that we have that accompanies all the Microsoft Office lessons are going to be what we call our action plans. And these actually appear in other lessons as well. But if we click on one of those, this is going to be a student version of that lesson plan that we looked at talking about the objectives, and then providing them with a step-by-step -step list of what they need to do to complete the unit that they're working on. So this is great for remote learning. Um, you also have the opportunity, if you are not wanting them to do everything, this provides a number of steps. You could just say complete steps three, five, and seven, and leave off the rest that you don't want them to complete, but it would kind of give you a place to start and determining a plan for what you want your students to do. Additionally, at the end of that, it's going to list any of the student files that they would need when completing different projects or activities. If you think that seeing all the different lessons in a course playlist might be a little overwhelming to your students, you can come over here and then beneath the lesson visibility settings, you can click show settings. This is going to put a drop down menu next to each of the different lessons in your playlist. By default, it's all going to be set to visible to students. But if you come over here and then again beneath lesson visibility heading, click on hide all and then OK, it's going to hide every single lesson from them. So then you can just come in and turn on the lessons that you want to be visible to your students. You also have the option of coming in and making a lesson visible on a certain date. So if you have your syllabus built out and the number of days you think a particular lesson is going to take or you're wanting to implement due dates, just like you can do on the interactive activities, you can come in here and just choose a date for these lessons to become visible to your students. The other option is there were a ton of checkboxes within each lesson. So if you wanted to have some flexibility or save some time, quite honestly, if you're over here underneath your lesson and assessment activity heading, if you click on hide all, that's going to hide all of those checkboxes. So go ahead and uncheck all of them so the students don't see it on their license. The same thing for the printable activities. And then you also have the option to hide the PowerPoint and video. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so what hiding the PowerPoint and video is good for is if you don't want the students to go ahead and start working ahead. Or if you've had your students and they've completed everything, they've studied for their final assessment, and you're ready for them to take that, and you don't want them to be able to open the lesson materials while they're taking that final assessment, if you just hide that PowerPoint and video, then they're not gonna be able to view that while they're taking their assessments. So now if we go back in and look at one of the lessons, so we could even look at unit two here, you can see that this checkbox is unchecked. So whenever we're ready for the students to view it, we would just make sure the checkbox is checked. 
And then if we scroll down here and look at the printables, you can see that all of those different checkboxes are unchecked. So you can actually go in and let's say we wanted them to do the matchup activity for the printable and we want them to do the business partnership plan. One thing that's really important, especially with the Microsoft Office projects in any of the programs, is if you make the project visible, make sure you make the student file visible too, so that way the students have everything that they need for that particular project or activity. The other options here, again, like I mentioned before, you have your interactives. You can come in and make each of those visible to students as you're ready for them to complete them and then go in and set your attempt threshold. So that's pretty much a general overview of how ICEV works. Let's go to the just Microsoft Office playlist and talk a little bit about how our Office curriculum is designed. So when we're looking at the playlist that just has Microsoft Office in it, you can see that we have developed units for each of the different programs. And the way each of the programs is structured is there's going to be a unit which goes over specific course content. So for instance, in Microsoft Word, if we went to unit six and we were looking at it, it's just going to go over formatting tools. And then within that unit, all of the PowerPoint segments which go through it, you click on the main menu, you can see that there's one PowerPoint segment which is going to go over the formatting tools in Word. So we could kind of click through that to see what those look like. The PowerPoint's always just going to be um, stagnant screenshots with different labels and showing where different pieces are located. And then once you get to the video segment portion, it's going to give you instructions for how to actually locate that video. The way that you do that is just come to the select playlist drop down menu and then look for the name of the video. Once you click on that, it's going to pull up the video here where you can see it. To view the video, you can just click on play and then it will start playing. The videos are going to be fairly short and to the point of what students learned within the actual PowerPoint lesson and really try to help apply that knowledge. Each project that's within the units is going to be specific to the skills that were learned within the video or PowerPoint segment. So for instance, this particular unit has an activity specifically related to the formatting tool section. So anything that's in a unit is going to be very specific to that particular unit. So if we went and looked at another unit here, so let's just go to even a different program. Let's say unit seven for PowerPoint. This is just going to go over slide transitions and animations. And if we go look at that particular project and open it up, it's just about adding the partnership or effects to this particular project, which is the business partnership plan. And then here is your student file that could then be downloaded and the students would be able to work on it. Where you get into more of the rigorous projects or where you're going to have multiple skills be tested by the students is each of the different programs has a final review unit. So if we go in and we look at Microsoft Word's final review unit here, there's going to be um, there's going to be a slide presentation for each of those that just really goes over kind of the nuts and bolts of the different uh, pieces of the program as well as formatting tools. So it's a very good comprehensive review of all of the different material that has been covered up to this point. If we go look at the lesson plan, these lesson plans are going to look a little different in that when you get to uh, the projects, there's going to be multiple projects. And these are the projects which are going to combine multiple skills or multiple testing points and are much more rigorous to look at. And so when a student is completing, say for instance, this thank you letter project, they're actually going to have to do multiple skills. So they may be inserting a header and a footer to make some letterhead that then they could insert text or format text that's already within the student file. And so looking at those um, review projects is really where the rigor and if you are trying to prepare students for Microsoft certifications, 
the wording of those projects will be very similar to some of the prompts they are given within those particular certification tests that they can take for Microsoft. So if we scroll down and we look at all of the different projects, like I mentioned again, you can see that there's the project sheet and then the student file if needed. It's very important to make sure that if you do have a project visible to them that they also have all the different student files needed. All those student files, again, are going to be listed on the project sheet where you can see um, where they're at. So it will tell them in these first set of instructions which of the different student files that they will be needing to work on. So that's really the basics of the Microsoft Office curriculum within ICEV. So this is one of my favorite projects, and it's actually in Unit 14 of Word Basics. So this is the review unit that's for Word Basics. And it's a project called a job description. And why this job description project is one of my favorites is because students have to do a little research and find a job description that fits something that they think that they might actually want to do as a career. And they're learning Microsoft Word skills while they're completing the project and following specific formatting guidelines and a style guide that goes along with it. So lots of different skills tested and then also getting to do some career exploration and have some real world application of understanding what these skills could potentially lead to in a future career. Another one of my favorite projects is in Unit 7 of PowerPoint Basics, and it's the New Company Work Attire Project. Um, these are all student files that are provided to you, but you do have the opportunity of kind of taking and flipping this project a little, if you will. And if you wanted to add some extensions for some of your um, GT type students, you could actually allow them to create their own plan for a company either in town that um, they could work for or their own entrepreneurial company and come up with some of these different components. So you have kind of the simplified version of them going through and completing the project as written with the different student files where they insert with the images. But then you also have the option of having students come in and if you wanted to do some extensions, really let them have their creativity. One of my other favorite projects is in Unit 11 of Excel Basics, which is the Stock Market Portfolio Project. This project instructs students to take a budget that they're issued and buy stocks and monitor those stocks throughout the week to see who can make the most money while utilizing Excel to track their progress, whether that's a loss or a profit. It's a great opportunity for some cross-curricular integration with either an economics class or a math course. And then the last project I really wanted to feature is kind of two projects and one of the lessons that we actually have within the Microsoft Office curriculum. And the curriculum lesson is called Utilizing the Microsoft Office Suite. And what that lesson does is essentially explain how all the different programs in Microsoft Office can be used together and that different parts of projects or businesses utilize different pieces of the Microsoft Office suite to complete different tasks. And so a couple of those projects are a dream vacation project or the new business plan project. Um, and they're really a great way of showing students how all of the different Microsoft programs can be utilized together and they get to personalize their projects and kind of have a little bit more ownership. So thanks again for attending the Making Sense of Microsoft using ICEV to teach Microsoft Office session. If you want to stick around for the Q&A after this, I'm happy to answer any questions or take a deeper look at any of the Microsoft Office curriculum or items that we've talked about today. Also, be sure to enter the code for the gamification piece to make sure that you're getting all your points to be entered for those really great prizes that we're offering. So again, click the link in the bottom for the Q&A and be sure to grab that code for the gamification. Thanks, talk to you soon.